guys, Monica Weekly here. You know how you're supposed to post about real estate every single day on Facebook? Yes, yes you do. And the reason is if we don't remind our Facebook friends what we do for a living and how we help people, they will forget about it. We know it's our job to inform, educate, and demonstrate what we do for a living. Well, I'm coaching agents all around the country and they understand that, but they're not doing it. And I ask them, why aren't you doing it? Probably just like you. And they said, Monica, we don't know what to post. Can we just borrow your stuff? Because I love creating Facebook posts. And these can often be used over on Instagram as well. So I said yes, and people were borrowing my stuff. So I created finally a product that you can sign up for for free. It is free, guys. There is no reason for you not to sign up for this. It's ghostposter.com, G H O S T. P-O-S-T-R, no E in there, just T-R, dot com. And what you're going to get is you're going to get a Facebook posting idea to your email every single day. So not only do you have this great idea, but you've been reminded, oh yeah, I need to post. And that's Monday through Friday. And if you don't love the post or you think, gosh, I'd like something else, well, you're also going to get access to a library of over 600 different posts for you to choose from by category. You're going to love it. Go sign up, ghostposter.com. Don't waste a minute. And then be sure to join the private Facebook group. All right. I'll see you in there. Hey, we're going to talk about being nude. I am here with Lindsay Dreyer. Hey, Lindsay. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for being on again. You get, you were on our Instagram feed talking about like, what type of agent are you? And that's so fun. I referenced it like a thousand times. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah. I love it. So if people haven't seen that, they need to go back and check our Instagram for that to see what agent they are. But you are, um, you are the broker owner of Cincy Chic in Fredericksburg, Virginia, DC and Baltimore, right? That is correct. Yes. City Chic Real Estate. We're 11 years old. So I have been a broker owner for what seems like an eternity. <laughs> yeah. 11 years in realtor years is like, it's like dog years, right? A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm definitely yeah. 77. Like that. You, I'm feeling all of you look great episode. though. Thank you so much. Real estate, it beats you up, but it keeps you young. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, okay. What is nude? I mean, obviously we don't actually mean like, no, naked. we're not actually getting naked. You and I are wearing too many, too many clothes for that to actually yeah. be what we're doing today. So basically nude is part of referral referrals and how you get referrals. So, hey, so it could much be good. Of, oh my gosh. So like <laughs> so much of real estate training is get referrals, get referrals, get referrals, right. get referrals. And nobody really understands what that actually even means. So right. nude is, there's basically two parts to becoming what I think of as a referral master. And mm -hmm. this is not original thought. This is like stolen from ninja selling, but it's like one of my favorite things. So the first piece is it's your repackaged, nude. repackaged like and, and it has a little Lindsay spin on it. So here yeah. we go. So we have your nude score, which we'll dive into. Then you have to stay in touch and remind them that you exist. So That's the hard part, right? For a lot of agents, it is because they're the firefighter and they're just putting out the fires right. and they're like, oh, shoot, I forgot to send the email newsletter. Oh, shoot, I forgot to send the postcard. Oh, shoot, I forgot to do this. And I forgot to make my calls. I forgot to check in on my people. So <sighs> yeah, that's, I think, really hard for agents. But yeah. I also think the nude piece is something that a lot of agents don't really look into. So okay. let's go. Want to dive in? Let's do it. All right. Let's, let's get nude. Let's get nude. So N stands for novelty. And okay. this is what makes you unique. So this is your unique selling proposition as an agent. And every agent has one. So Let's, let's like try to suss out ours. So okay. I think one of mine is that I am 39 years old and I have 18 years of real estate experience. So how I is am that a, possible? Right. How is that possible? So I am almost like a real estate Wikipedia in a 39 year old's body. So that has always I feel like been, it's like a Wikipedia and an in touch magazine. Right. So that has made me the millennial whisperer, like, oh because millennials come to me and they're like, whoa, you know, like as much as a 
50 year old real estate agent. And I'm like, right. no, you get a millennial, like millennial package yeah. with like tons of experience. So that's right. always been my unique selling proposition is that that's I'm awesome. a young, knowledgeable realtor. Um, yeah. How about you? I would say mine is, what is mine? I mean, I actually like give a shit and we'll do what's like best, like for you. And so we will find, figure that out. Yeah. You keep it real. Like yeah. you're, you're not a like typical salesy, like BSE real estate agent. You're one no. that just like keeps it real and truly has your client's interests, best interests at heart. Exactly. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. And I do what I say I'm going to do. Yes. So like That's that it. isn't like, it doesn't have to be like magic. It can be anything. Like, But I think can- too, like we've done a couple of videos on this with other people, like kind of discovering what's your unique selling proposition. And you're right. It, people are like, well, I, I don't know. Like, well, and it's really just, who are you? Yeah. Who are you as a person? How do your friends describe you? And like, that's, that's what it is. That's your magic. That's your that's superpower. It. Exactly. Yes. So optimizing your unique selling proposition and okay. novelty, that is, I think hard for some people, but it's super important because you need to understand who you are as an agent, because that allows you to sell yourself and yes. show people why they should work with you. Like, and why show up that way. Easy. Right. Like, yeah. I think like what you're saying is really resonating because I think if people like go to my feed, they'll, they'll see that like everything exactly. I put out is like straight to the point, like no BS, like this is what it is. I don't care if you don't like it. It still doesn't make it less of a yes. So, so, okay, we can move on. N is done in in the news. So let's go to you. Who is utility? Utility is, did you solve their problem? So did you do 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 it? Yeah. Did you actually do it? And did you do it well? Oh, wow. So that kind of, you know. So for a buyer, let's say they, I mean, who knows? Home inspections, I feel like are coming back, right? So Yeah, right. Say, they are. There's a home inspection and the home inspector comes up with all these items and there's like a nasty negotiation. And why does it have to be nasty? Right. But like your buyer is going to ultimately place the blame on you because right. you're the face of this negoci- negotiation. So right. it's how are you solving this problem? How are you holding this deal together? How are you project managing contract to close? Like, did you actually solve their problems? Did you actually do the work that they hired you for? Yes. And did you make it fun? Was it stress-free? Did they feel like you did a really good job? No, not stress-free. Right. And so it's like, did you handle things behind the scenes for them? Did you set proper expectations? So I think utility comes, it's not just, did you do the job, but it's, did you do it to a super high proficiency? Like, did, were you an expert? And so I think that's where a lot of agents fall down is that they yeah. don't know their market. They don't know their contracts. They don't know how to expertly negotiate home inspection items. They don't know what questions mm-hmm. to ask lenders. They don't know how to put together a good appraisal package to make sure that the property appraises. So there's this whole realm Thing. of knowledge yeah. and expertise that for you even like, don't like, don't know how to explain to the client what they are doing in a way that's like, I am working for you without making it dramatic. Right. Yeah. Like a lot of them know how to make it extra dramatic and it doesn't need to be like that, but it's like, answering, I would say answer their questions before they're asked, because by the time that your client calls you or asks you a question, they're pissed. A hundred percent. If, if you're not emailing them first and they're Mm -hmm. asking you for an update, you failed. So yeah, that is like the number one thing is like proactive communication is so crucial. Right. Never. I'm almost embarrassed if a client's like, what am I supposed to be doing? Because that means I didn't do my job. Like I didn't tell them what's coming next. So that's a hundred percent our job. Like, okay. So utility is like your process too. Like utility is like, you're the boss and mm -hmm. you're owning it. You're running the show and you're doing this transaction around. Right. You are the boss of this transaction. Your client knows that. So, okay. Moving on to D D is a, also a big one. Dependability. (laughs) It's my favorite one. Oh, it's my favorite too. So do you actually respond to emails? Do you actually respond to text messages? Do you show up on time? 
but Ooh. that's a large one. <laughs> that's my like number one pet peeve of real estate. Can they count on you? Yes. Can they count on you? Like the other thing that a lot of agents don't think about is your appearance. So are you showing up one day in yoga pants and the next day in a business suit? That's I feel not- personally attacked. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sorry. But, um, maybe you're making it up for it with your utility. I, I- <laughs> No, I actually have a strict uniform of like, well, this is a fancy shirt, but like mostly a black shirt and jeans. That's, <laughs> that's true, it. But like, that's your uniform. That's dependability, right? Yeah. So like you have mm-hmm. a way that you dress when you're with clients. And so that's a big one. It's just like, is your car clean? Like, can they rely on you? And you mentioned before process. This is where process comes in. So did you do a buyer consult? Did you, do you bring them um, a copy of the listings at every present, at every appointment? Telling them like what they need to know, yes. what questions do they have? Yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. So it's like you have a process. So I that's- mean, the good news is with our job is like, there's not really a lot of variation in what, what clients ask, either buying or selling. Like they basically want to know all the same thing. So it's easy to put a process together. It really is. You either have it as an email template or a handout. That's, That's it. it. It's Boom. really not rocket science. Done. Video yes, over. Done. You what go. do you think? How do these, uh, before we move on to the last one, yeah. how does um, the cooperating agent, like, does is there any play in there with using these strategies and working with them? Or is this only clients? I think that it can definitely help build your relationship with your co-op agents. I just think if you're a great agent to your client and you're bringing that same mentality to You the can't help but be a great agent. Yeah. Like you're just going to have that spirit of being great at your job. And I think yeah. that's, that's who I want to work with on the other side. Is yeah. Even if they're a pain in the ass, if they're great at their job and they're treating right. you with respect, like- that's great. Like, I love that. Like we're all humans after all. And we're all like, we're all working for the deal. So I think definitely like you can use these to help make the transaction easier on the other side too. So it's like your communication with the listing agent. Like, do you have a template you send when you're ratified to all parties or, and I think this is where like a TC comes in because they're, they run their consistent process. And so if you're not that kind of person, get a TC. That's Even if you job. are, you should have a transaction right. coordinator. Oh, yeah. When you get to a certain point, a TC is like, you have to do it. You have to have so, it. Yeah. Okay. Right. What's, um, how do we become fully nude? What's okay. So e? e is economy and economy is, do they feel like they got their money's worth? Oh. So buyers, they don't really like feel like that commission's coming out of their pocket. So I think for buyers, it can sometimes feel a little easier to have the economy listings are difficult on the, and especially now that the market's softening a little bit in certain pockets. I don't think it is. If you tell them the whole, I don't think it is. Cause if you have your, your uh, marketing plan and you literally update, like if you have a whole marketing plan, it's like, okay, I did this. I did this. We have our update. Let's update. We did this. We did this. Then they're like, Oh shit, that's great. It goes back to expectation setting, right? So it's like with my sellers, I'm like, you're going to hear from me every Monday morning. That is when I send our update from activity from the weekend. Mm -hmm. What's going on? What's going on in the market? Is there any new listings or things under contract we need to consider? And do we need to change course this week or or are we just holding, holding steady? Mm -hmm. So I think setting the expectation of like, and then earning your commission, like you can't just put it in MLS and hope it sells when you have a shifting, softening market. It's like you you've to got to prospect. Work. You've got to, yeah, figure out like you have to call buyer. for feedback, not rely on showing time feedback to just come back to you. Like you have to get in touch with your co- like cooperating agents that have competing properties and asking them, how was your traffic this weekend? Right. Have you got many offers? So it's like, you have to actually do the work. So I think right. that's where economy comes in with mm-hmm. sellers did you do the work and did you communicate that you were doing the work? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So how do we score ourselves on these? Like what's yeah. the rating? Okay. okay. So this is where it gets super interesting. So you have to score yourself from zero to a hundred on all zero four, to a hundred on all four of these. So you're going to have a total score, perfect score before hundred. I'm 500. So, Just well, kidding. Uh, <laughs> 
Just kidding. I'm 450. Oh, um, nice. So be honest with yourself. I'm not keeping track. I'm not looking at your score. However, there's a tipping point and this is where it gets very interesting. Okay. And I think a lot of agents realize that they're like a 280, a 290. They're like, oh, that Ooh. sounds great. Mm-hmm. Now you want to know why you're not getting referrals really examine this because the tipping point is 315 points. If you are over that one in seven people will send you a referral. Okay. Um, if it's below that, it's like abysmal. So one in seven doesn't sound like that much, really not that much. And so I think the thing is with referring is that people don't refer if it's not going to make them look good. So mm-hmm. I'm not sending you to my hairdresser. If I, if I'm not a hundred percent confident, she's going to cut your hair amazingly. And so it's the same with, that's a estate. good point. Like if, yeah, if you're like an agent that like, isn't very communicative or not dependable, they're not going to send you to, or if you didn't do the work or whatever, right. they're not going to send their friends. Cause they're thinking like, well, that's how they're going to treat my friend. And then I'm going to look bad. Now with new agents, it's totally very right. interesting because they don't have past clients. They're trying to get referrals from their sphere and their friends or family, whatever. Now you can score yourself on your nude experience as a person personally. <laughs> so, you know what? I think they should call me and let me score them. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you about it. Like if you're the person who always shows up late to every social function and like rolls in like whatever, bye. people aren't going to send you business because you're showing you're not dependable and you don't show up on time. If you say you're going to bring something to the potluck and then you don't bring something to the potluck, mm-hmm. that's sending them a message that you're not dependable and you're not reliable. So interesting. So right? When new agents are like, why is nobody, nobody sending me business? It's like, take an honest look at yourself. Are you the drunk party person? Are you the hot mess? Like, what does your friend group feel about you? And like, they might love you for that, but it doesn't mean they're going to send you business because of that. Wow. That's just like like a slap in the face, Lindsay. Our last conversation was just so lovely and nice and fun and lighthearted. And this is like, don't be that drunk girl at the party that doesn't bring anything Mm -hmm. to potluck. Don't do, don't do it. Don't Um, do it. Or you can do it, but don't expect business. (laughs) (laughs) Or maybe we need to restructure your business in a different way yeah, where exactly. those are the buyers and sellers you're working you're, with. Yeah, right? you're contacting strangers. But if you want <laughs> referrals, this is where we're getting into referrals. Um, okay, so let's, we covered nude ad nauseum. So yes. nude is done. You have your nude score. There's a second piece to referrals and that's staying in touch. So there's the reticulator activation system in your brain where if something's important, it's like your filter. So if something's important, it remembers it. So like everyone always uses the car example. So you're like out shopping for a car. You realize I'm going to buy a mini Cooper. And then you see mini Coopers. Is that the car you have? I used to before I had kids. I was so cool. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So I'm sorry. There's this book that I'm writing yeah. on how to choose your man based on his car and what kind of car he drives. Because for men, it's different for women, but for men, their car like means something, right? Anyway. Oh, on. I'm so curious. So my husband has a Jeep. What does that mean about him? Which one? The Wrangler? Uh, the Grand Cherokee. The Grand Cherokee? Oh, <laughs> that dude knows to the penny what's in his 401k. <laughs> Is that true? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a coffee table book. So. Uh, no, I'm all about this. I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> he I should know. That. I know you really should, but did he pick that car out? <clears throat> oh yeah, he totally did. It's been like his dream car forever. How old is it? Um, is he it got older? it four years ago. Oh, hmm. yeah. I mean, he's not yeah. in line with his car. Okay, well, he is an enigma. That's why I married him. He's, he's a very an enigma. special man. He sounds special. He's great. I love him. Anyway. Um, All right. Moving on to reticulator activation system. So you have to have a plan to basically like trigger that you're the agent in their sphere at least three to four times a month. So I recommend diversification in some way. So 34 times a month sounds like a lot. No, not 34, three to four. 
three to, I'm sorry, three to four times a lot. Also so, a month also sounds like a lot. It does sound like a lot, but it actually really isn't. So if you do okay. email newsletter, email blast, that counts as one. If you do postcard, that counts as another. If you do market updates or reports, that can count as one. Um, calls, coffee, Facts, like Facebook text, marketing. Facebook, yeah, if you do like actual like outreach on Facebook, so like DMs or comments or whatever, okay. but actually isn't so bad. Like it's, Mm-mm. I think as long as you're trying to like hit them in all the different places, they're going to be like, oh, wow. What like, do you think is like the, uh, the ideal number of people to be communicating with three or four times a month? Like I think hundred at least. So okay. I think, and that's like real. What's like the most? The most is, oh, how can you manage um, tons of them? I mean, I think you really if, can't. If you, if you get to 500, you just have to do your best. Yeah, that's a lot. Okay. Anyway, so three to four times a month, you're I think most doing agents probably who are like really humming if they've like kept their sphere, their like database clean and tidy to just their like core people. I think you're probably at like 100 to 250. Like, probably that really sounds right. Mean. Somewhere you in know, there. People drop out, they move, they like, so yeah. I think this is like your real relationships. Like this isn't like, like you like them. They like you. Cause what you're feeling like, if you just like, if you just don't like them or they don't, you don't get along. Like, do you keep them in there or no? No. No. Right. That's okay. You don't have to. to. Like I would rather have a database of a hundred people that are like 50 people that I know are my people than to have a database of a thousand people that I have no idea who they are or right. like what matters to them. So that's Agreed. the, a, that's a decision you have to make as an agent. So if, okay. uh, if you're going for referrals, it's all the quality is in the relationship and being known, like, and trusted by them. So okay, that's the big thing. So basically that's, that's it. Like you have to optimize your nude score to get us. The hardest part is being honest with yourself about your nude score. Like go to therapy and like really evaluate, be like, what's going on here with my nude. Right. Right. Then having a consistent action plan for staying in touch three to four times a month. And you will see referrals roll in. Ta-da. Where it breaks down is in one of those places. And you have to do some hardcore reflection. If you're like, I'm not getting any, there is a reason why. And this right. is a really good way to troubleshoot. Where am I not doing a great job? Is it the staying in touch or is it the delivering a 400 nude score? And I think uh, some of this is also can be automated or have somebody else do it like a VA or something like that. Like our VA does a lot of the staying in touch stuff. Um, well, both of our VAs, I mean, you don't, it doesn't have to be like you specifically, like you have to make the call, but like, you don't have to send the newsletter. No, not at all. Like we do the newsletter for our agents. We do the po- monthly postcard for our agents. We do quarterly gifting. We do birthday cards. So like there's tons of stuff that we do for them. And then we're just relying on them to do the one-to-one outreach. Right. And that's, that doesn't have to be every month. That can be quarterly. That can be whatever cadence they can actually do it. That's yeah. most important. I would say quarterly is a good goal. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's whatever it's, you can do. And I think a lot of times agents or people in general, it's like, if I can't do it amazingly, I'm not going to do it at all. And it's no. like, no, just do something. Exactly. Anything. Well, I, if, <laughs> thank you for being on again, Lindsay, if people have a referral for you and, uh, or people in your brokerage in the DC, Baltimore or Fredericksburg, Virginia area, yeah. or they are an agent that's looking for a new home for themselves. What is the best way to get a hold of you? So you can find me on Instagram, Lindsay City Chic, um, or you can send me an email, Lindsay at City Chic Real Estate.com. Um, either one of those, it, I'm really responsive. So I'll get it right back to you. But this was so fun. Thank you for the opportunity to chat about this. It's one of my favorite topics. I love it. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Bye, Lindsay. All right. Bye. Hey guys, it's Monica here. I am so excited to introduce you to Real Estate Fight Club's newest partnership, Cyberbacker. Cyberbacker is the best in the business for virtual assistants. How do I know this? Because I am a Cyberbacker customer and I love this company. 
I have my favorite, Frances. She is my cyberbacker, been with me for over a year. She's amazing. She makes me better. She's eager to help. She's on time. She's disciplined. She's awesome. And this company, Cyberbacker, has figured out the system from the interviewing process to find out what I need to the interviewing process to interview several cyberbackers, to the onboarding process, to the training process. Very buttoned up, very awesome. You and I both know it's time for you to leverage. It's time for you to take that step and Cyberbacker is a really safe, awesome solution. Make sure to mention Fight Club and you will be getting a free gift. All right, do it. Make the call. See ya. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a podcast.